Hello YouTubers. Today we're going to talk about warning lights on cars. Now there's loads of different ones. I'm only going to the basic ones, the ones that mainly pop up uh, just to see and just to tell you, you know, if you really need to stop or can you keep going to a garage or anything like that, you know. Um, <coughs> oh, here's the first one. This is an engine light. This is a bitch of a light because these come on for no reason at all. Sometimes you could you could hit a pothole, you could have gone through water, you could have done a, a load of things. It could just come on. Now, depending on where you are, like if you're in the middle of a motorway or something, providing your car is still driving, hasn't lost power, it's not smoking, uh, it's not making any funny noises, the car is fine. Then you are more or less safe to go either just to get home or, or to get to a near to a nearer garage. Now I will be showing you a gadget later on where you can actually uh, buy it. It's very cheap. It's a little Bluetooth and it connects to your phone and you can read simple engine lights. Um, it's very cheap and it is actually quite handy to have. It even measures fuel economy and all that sort of stuff. Um, but engine lights, providing your car is still driving, I wouldn't worry about it because they can just come on for just for a split second because it hasn't read a particular sensor. Uh, they're just one of them things where a lot of people kind of panic about where you don't really necessarily need to. Now the second light. Get out of the... Uh, the next light on the other hand is this one. This one's the ABS. Now you have to be careful when this one comes on because this, this again, they, they all can come on for a lot of reasons. Um, but this is obviously due to your brake, so this is where you really want to be careful. Uh, the best thing to do if this comes on is just pull over as soon as you can and just check your brake pedal. Make sure your brake pedal is not going all the way down to the floor. If your brake pedal is going all the way down to the floor, you could have uh, a stone, for example, could have broke a pipe. Uh, you could you could have lost brake fluid or you know, stuff like that. So that's obviously kind. Of, that's the key to pull over. Um, now, on the other hand, if you feel like if the pedal feels good, and you lift up the bonnet and there's and you have brake fluid and you can't see any fluid leaking, uh, again you should be okay to drive home or to the nearest garage. But just be aware of the fact that potentially you could have a problem. So drive obviously slower. Uh, leave a bigger gap in front of the car just in case because you know it could just happen and it's always best maybe just to kind of leave your foot just off the brake and just press it gently just to see if you still got a pedal uh, that's that's what I personally do and that's what I personally say because at least then you know you're not going to be stuck in the middle of nowhere you can get somewhere providing you still have a pedal now the next one is the oil light I didn't come up there somewhere I can't be asked all that stuff now it's just taking too long um, same more or less same thing the ABS uh, pull over as soon as you can uh, this could be a couple of things obviously the first one it could be you're losing oil which is obviously a bad thing uh, but when you pull over you'll obviously be able to see that now if you pull over and you can't physically see any oil dripping and you check your dipstick and you've got oil in your engine then it could just be the sensors gone that's not a big deal um, that again that means you can drive um, and then book it in to, to a garage or whatever, you know, or buy a sensor yourself and fit it. Um, so that's, that's as simple as that really, the, the, there's no other real way. So it's either the light, it's either the, the, you, you, you're losing oil or the sensor's gone. Simple one, that one. Next one. Now, next one is battery. Again, uh, it's up here somewhere, again, can't be asked to do it. Um, again simple um it could just be your fan belt snapped or it could be your alternator is not charging uh, or it could be a bad battery now if your bam fan belt snapped you'll obviously clearly see on the side of your engine you you'll see there's no fan belt there you might even see it behind you uh now if a fan belt snapped the problem is that your battery won't be charging and some cars not all cars the 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 pump the um the water pump runs off the um the alternator and it runs off the fan belt so your car's going to overheat so unfortunately with that you kind of have to stop same thing if your alternator isn't charging 
If your alternator is not charging, and especially at night when you turn your lights on, you're going to lose power very quickly. If you've got, if if it's driven by a pump, your engine's going to cut out. So unfortunately, even though a fan belt's not a big deal, if the battery light comes on, it's one of them things where you more or less have to stop because eventually the car is going to cut out for having no power in the battery or or, or one of them. So unfortunately, it's a simple simple fix. But it's one of them where you do, if unless you're, unless you're very close to home or very close to garage, unfortunately you might have to start getting it towed for a simple thing like a fan belt. Right, the last one I'm going to cover today, because uh, there's just there's just too many. Uh, these are kind of the most main important ones that would normally pop up. Uh, is the overheating light? Again, it's one of them things where it could be a couple of things. Uh, literally, your car's overheating. Obviously, simple one. If it is, stop. Fair enough. And if you happen to have water with you, do not put freezing cold water into a boiling engine because you could, again, crack the block, crack the head. You could do a lot of damage. You can leave it to cool down and um, then pour the water in. If it's leaking, it still might get you home and then obviously arrange someone to fix it or whatever. Again, it could just be a sensor that's gone. So you pull over. You check your engine if, if you can physically see it steaming then obviously you know if you check the um, the expansion bottle now if it is overheating do not open the expansion bottle because it will literally just blow up in your face and it's boiling hot water but if, if you can't see any signs of it fizzing or anything like that then if you open up and there's water there again it could just be a sensor so keep an eye on it and you can keep driving now if you've got a, a, a leak in your radiator you can actually put eggs in your radiator if you happen to have been just been shopping and uh, you've got a pinhole leak in your radiator you, you'll see it kind of coming out drop a couple of egg whites in there again it will if, if the hole's not too big it will actually seal believe it or not it'll get you home or to a garage it's obviously not a permanent fix but it'll get you hopefully to where you need to go that's all I'm going to cover today. I'm going to show you a little gadget to read engine lights. I'll show you that in a second. It's very cheap. It works off your phone. It's a little Bluetooth device. Um, it only really covers what engine warning lights, not ABS or anything like that. But it's handy. It's very cheap. And it's one of them things everyone right, can really That's just a really quick have. run through of lights. Now, don't get me wrong. The lights can come on for other reasons. So you're going to get fucking idiots going, Oh, my light came on for this reason. And you didn't get that right. Look. I'm only giving you a rough idea why these lights can come on, okay? There's loads more reasons why they can come on, and there's loads more lights. But these are the kind of the most basic ones, and these are the kind of the ones people panic about the most, especially when they don't really know. Um, so th some of them are, you have to worry about, and some of them you don't. But anyway, this little gadget here, brilliant little thing, if you can see that now, hopefully. Uh, let's get it in view there. Up we go now. Hopefully you can see that. It's a ELM three two seven interface. Now you can get these on YouTube, oh, on YouTube, <laughs> on eBay, and they're quite cheap. Now you have to make sure you get the the one that's for phones, the Bluetooth one's for phones, because you can get some of these that are for a, a laptop, um, and you can buy an app. On your phone, I think the last time I looked, it was about five or ten euros to buy an app. Uh, you can get some free ones, but the, the paid ones are slightly better, and they're not that much. I think this was around about thirty euros at the time. But there is a couple of different ones. You want to make sure you get the one that's designed for phones and not a PC. Now this only read engine lights, not on all cars, but on some cars. But it also gives you a fuel economy in it. You know, it, for what it is, for the price you pay. This is a great little gadget because um, you can spend thousands on these things. But this, for a few quid, you can read your engine light, you can knock off your engine light, and you can do a, a few things with it through your phone, through Bluetooth on your phone, which is which is quite cool. So anyway, that's the video. Hoped you, uh, you enjoyed it. Hoped uh, it might help you out in the future. If you like the video, thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and there's more to come.